It came from the drive-in. Hi, I'm Brian Rollins, your host, and this is the Dorky, Geeky, Nerdy Trivia Podcast. This week, we're heading back to the time of McCarthyism, the Korean War, and classic sci-fi movies. When the baby boomers became teenagers, Hollywood wanted to cash in. And they did so with some of the prototypical science fiction films we still love today. Their legacy is so strong that many of these films have been remade, homaged, or straight up spoofed in one way or another. So, it's back to the 1950s this week. As always, we'll have three rounds of 10 questions each. Each round will get harder than the last. If you need rules or a score sheet, head over to dorkygeekynerdy.com slash rules. Okay, grab your popcorn, put on your 3D glasses, snuggle up with your date, and hang on. The feature is about to start. The Dorky Round Number 1. Which adaptation of an H.G. Wells novel replaced alien tripods with flying saucers? The War of the Worlds Number 2. John Carpenter's 1982 The Thing was a remake of what 1951 film? The Thing from Another World, both of which were based on the novella Who Goes There by John W. Campbell. Number 3. What 1956 film was inspired by Shakespeare's The Tempest? Forbidden Planet Number 4. Remade in 1978, what 1956 film gave rise to the term Pod People? Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Number 5. In what Walt Disney film did Kirk Douglas have a whale of a tale to tell you? Twenty Thousand Leagues Under the Sea. Number 6. Featuring a molecular transporter and a pesky insect, what 1958 film starred Al Hedison, Patricia Owens, and Vincent Price? The Fly Number 7 What 1954 film served as Guillermo del Toro's inspiration for his 2017 The Shape of Water? The Creature from the Black Lagoon Number 8. In 1948, they met Frankenstein, but in the 50s, what comedy duo met up with The Mummy and later Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Let it be Bud Abbott and Lou Costello. Number 9. Now the longest-running film franchise in history, what film kicked it all off in 1954? Gojira, or Godzilla. Number 10. Klaatu and Gort try to save the Earth from itself in what 1951 film? The Day the Earth Stood Still. The Geeky Round. 
Number one, from what creature was it advised to run, don't walk? The blob. Number two, what classic dystopian novel was first adapted for the big screen in 1956 and starred Edmund O'Brien? That would be George Orwell's 1984. Number three. It Came From Outer Space is based on a story by what sci-fi author? Ray Bradbury. Number 4. In 1951, what was the first theatrical feature film based on a DC Comics character? Superman and the Mole Men. Number 5. Before becoming famous for more comedic, satiric roles, what actor portrayed Commander John J. Adams in Forbidden Planet? Surely you know the answer. It's Leslie Nielsen. Number 6. Clint Eastwood appears uncredited as a jet squadron leader in what giant spider movie? Tarantula. Number 7. Written, produced, directed, and edited by Ed Wood, what 1959 movie was the last on-screen appearance of Bella Lugosi? Plan 9 from Outer Space Number 8. What 1954 movie featured giant ants attacking New Mexico? Them. Number 9. James Mason co starred with Pat Boone in what Jules Fern film adaptation in 1959? Journey to the Center of the Earth. Number 10. Caesar Romero battled dinosaurs on a mysterious island in what 1951 movie? Lost Continent. Okay, let's take a quick break for the book of the week. Our book this week is Invasions USA by Michael Bliss. Out of more than 180 science fiction films produced in the United States between 1950 and 1959, 20 were concerned with the notion of an invasion. Of these, a select number used invasions as metaphors of issues that were of importance to America at the time, such as assaults upon individuality and marriage and debates about the supremacy of the human race. The invasion may be real, the day the Earth stood still and war the world, dreamed, invaders from Mars, or the result of a mental breakdown, as seems to be the case in Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Real or not, all of these massive disturbances to the status quo convey the same anxiety. In the 1950s, many Americans felt that things in their world weren't quite right, and this sense of unease was expressed in the country's art, notably these films. In Invasions USA, the essential science fiction films of the 1950s, Michael Bliss examines movies that stripped away the veneer of normality 
during a decade often portrayed as the last innocent period in American history. From a boy's nightmares about his alien-controlled parents and a young woman's fears that her fiancé has been replaced by an emotionless alien to an extraterrestrial visitor who comes to warn mankind about its self-destructive ways. The stories of these films offer a variety of messages, both subtle and overt. You can find a link to this week's book or previous week's at dorkygeekynerdy.com slash book. And now, back to the show. The Nerdy Round Number 1. What 1957 film concludes with, To God, There Is No Zero. The Incredible Shrinking Man. Number 2. Mystery Science Theater 3000, The Movie, lampooned what 1955 film? This Island Earth. Number 3. What 1958 film's poster was featured in Paul and Jamie's apartment in the show Mad About You? Attack of the 50-Foot Woman. Paul says it's the first film he ever saw. Number 4. Starring Peter Cushing and Christopher Lee, what movie was Hammer Films' first color production? The Curse of Frankenstein. Number 5. What film had the Earth being destroyed by the rogue star Bellus? When Worlds Collide. Number 6. Ray Harryhausen's Dynamation Technique was first used in what 1953 movie? The Beast from 20,000 Fathoms. Number 7. What 1950 film ends with a crew of the Luna desperately trying to jettison enough weight to return home from the moon? Destination Moon Number 8. What prolific film producer was behind Destination Moon, When Worlds Collide, and the War of the Worlds, among others. George Paul. Number 9. James Craig, Gloria Talbot, and Lon Chaney Jr. run into a 50-foot-tall mutant in what movie? The Cyclops. Number 10. Raymond Burr, Tom Conway, and Lon Chaney Jr. co starred in what 1951 combination King Kong and Frankenstein knockoff? Bride of the Gorilla. Well, that's it. While some of these movies have aged better than others, we geeks do owe them respect for getting science fiction into the mainstream. If you're looking for other genres and other decades, make sure you subscribe to the podcast. We'll have them on sometime in the future. And speaking of the future, here's your hint for next week's show. What movie's sequel was advertised as just when you thought it was safe to go back into the water? 
That's all for this week. But I do want to put in a quick request. If you're enjoying the podcast, please leave a review on whatever podcast directory you use. It goes a long way to help others join us. If you've already rated us, thanks. Also, feel free to share the episodes with your friends. You can find us on Twitter and Facebook, so it's easy to send links to folks you think might like us. Links to all things dorky, geeky, nerdy can be found at, appropriately enough, dorkygeekynerdy.com. I'm your host, Brian Rollins, and thanks for listening.